I'm going to buy this property. I'm going to flip it. I'll pay you 12% interest or 15% of the profits, whichever is greater. Welcome to the Accelerated Investor Podcast with Josh Cantwell. Josh Cantwell. If you love entrepreneurship and investing in real estate, then you are in the right place. Josh is the CEO of Freeland Ventures Real Estate Private Equity and has personally invested in well over 500 properties all across the country. He's also made hundreds of private lender loans and owns over 1,000 units of apartments. Josh is an expert at raising private money for deals, and he prides himself on never having had a boss in his entire adult life. Josh and his team also mentor investors and entrepreneurs from all over the world. He doesn't dream about doing deals. He actually does them, and so do his listeners and students. Now sit back, listen, listen learn, learn, and accelerate your business, your life, and your investing with the Accelerated Investor Podcast. So hey, welcome back. I'm so excited that you're back with me at Accelerated Investor. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. And um, I wanted to jump right into a case study. Uh, this is the 242 Sandstone Ridge case study. Uh, this is a property that we're actually, I'm recording this podcast on a Friday, and this deal is actually set to close on Monday in about three days. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about this deal and how we used private money to acquire this property and how we were able to pivot into multiple different types of exit strategies depending on what the market was kind of telling us and how we use private money to find the deal, position the deal, renovate the deal, and then exit. And the exit that we're going to have on Monday is going to produce about an $85,000 net profit check. Uh, so big deal, big profit, but also has created a lot of tax benefits and a lot of other benefits. So let's just talk through the deal for a minute. So 242 Sandstone Ridge Way is a property you can look it up if you want in Zillow or Public Auditor's website. Um, I bought it years ago, about five years ago, I bought it as a HUD home. So the first question people ask me is, well, how do you find deals? I found this deal through HUDHomestore.com. It was up on HUDHomestore.com for about 170, 175. I made a lowball offer. We were able to get it accepted for 134. So I was able to buy the property for 134. Now the neighborhood, everything in the neighborhood sells for 200 and Twenty two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. So I knew immediately. Okay, I'm acquiring this property at about sixty five percent of what it's going to be worth. So I made a blind offer. You know, in the low one hundreds, one hundred and ten, one hundred and twenty. They came back with a counter offer. Then after they came back with a counter offer that was kind of in my ballpark, I thought, okay, now I can go see the property. So I made a blind offer online. I used the broker's NAID number. So if you're making an offer on a HUD home. You have to do it through an agent that has an NAID number, and they can make the offer right through HUDHomestore.com. So I found the property there, made the offer, got a counter offer, and okay, I thought, okay, now we're kind of in the same ballpark, me, the buyer, and HUD, which is obviously the government. It's, a, it's an FHA loan gone bad, so it's a HUD home, and, uh, and basically we were in the same ballpark, so I thought, okay, let, let, me, go, let me go figure this out. Let me go look at the property. I walk into the property. I'm like, oh my God, this house has just been renovated. What is going on? It's actually in pristine, perfect condition. Um, so I leave the property. I walk over to the neighbor's house. I talk to the neighbor and the neighbor is like, yeah, well, that's a bank owned, you know, government owned property because the owner moved to Alabama and just left the property, just walked away from it. And there ended up turning off the sump pump. The sump pump was not running. And so there's a bunch of mold in the basement. So the government, FHA, HUD, did not want to put the property back on the market with a bunch of mold in it. So the government actually paid to redo the entire basement, okay? Put up all new drywall, all new two-by-fours, all new carpet, redid that, even did part of the first floor, redid part of the kitchen. So I'm like, okay, well, the property's already been renovated. Um, we had an inspection done. All the mold was taken care of, essentially a brand new property. But people in the neighborhood knew that the property had been abandoned for about two years. So it's, you know, typical foreclosure property, typical HUD home, you know, going through foreclosure, abandoned for a while, and then the, you know, bank turns off the electricity, which turns off the sump pump, and all of a sudden, there's water in the basement. So that's how we found it. 
But when I bought it, it had already been renovated. So I'm thinking, okay, home run opportunity. Bought the property, put some more work into it, painted it, put some new backsplash in, finished off with some new granite. I replaced the old the old uh, countertops with some new granite, put in stainless steel appliances, and put it back on the market. Well, this is going back about five or six years ago, and the market in Northeast Ohio and Cleveland was still sort of suffering from the Great Recession. There was not a tremendous amount of activity, definitely not in the you know 225 range. So I put the property on the market, and we weren't really getting a ton of showings. We weren't really getting a ton of offers. So what I did was when I bought the property, I recruited the capital from a private lender. And I told the private lender, hey, if I'm going to buy this property, I'm going to flip it. I'll pay you 12% interest or 15% of the profits, whichever is greater. And the private lender said, great. Well, and they, so they funded about $160,000, which was my purchase, and some minor rehab. I actually didn't even need the whole $160,000. I only needed about one fifty. dollars So bought it for one thirty four, dollars about ten, twelve dollars dollars in rehab, but I got one sixty. dollars So I was actually able to put $10,000 in my pocket when I bought the property, Okay. If I wanted to spend it, I could, but the money was in my bank account. So I actually got paid essentially when I bought it. And so then we went through the renovation process, put the property on the market. We're all into it for about 150 and it's not selling. Partially because the property had a little bit of a stigma to it because of the mold. And also because, again, the market just wasn't that hot yet back in 2013, 2014. And so, um, And so I decided to rent it. So refinanced it, got a new appraisal on it, property appraised in 235, 240 range, put a new loan on it, okay, for about 150, paid off the private lender. Are you ready to automate and explode your real estate investing? We're searching for extremely motivated individuals who are sick and tired of wasting time and want to finally see real results from their real estate investing business. We're searching for investors looking to get to the next level and become a bigger, better version of themselves while being a more successful real estate investing entrepreneur. Apply for mentoring and coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. That's joshcantwellcoaching.com forward slash podcast. Paid off the private lender and uh, was able to pay off that, that private lender loan. I had to take that $10,000 that was in my account and bring it back to closing, actually, when I refinanced it. So had a new loan on it with a regular commercial lender for one fifty. Now, over the last five years or so, I rented the property out. I had the same tenant in the property for about three or four years. Tenant was great. Tenant took care of all the repairs. I had very, very little money invested in the property, um, beyond that, because the tenant was awesome, took care of the property, and, uh, and and did everything. So, you know, this was in a class A neighborhood, a class A type of property. So, I had a class A tenant who did a good job of maintaining the property. Very little money I put in it, maybe a thousand bucks over the past five years. Now, over the last five years, the tenant's been paying me rent. I've been making about four hundred dollars a month in positive cash flow. I've been paying off the mortgage, and every month, every year, we've been paying down the principal. So now we go to close Monday, a couple days from now, I only owe 127 on the property. I've paid the mortgage down from 150 down to 127, 128. And so now put the property back on the market. The market's definitely hotter now. There's a lot less inventory. There's a lot more buyers looking for properties. The property's been rented for five years. The property's been lived in for five years. There's no mold, there's no stigma. Everything in the property looks great, feels great, smells great. I put it on the market for 220 and got a full price offer in 48 hours for 222 minus $3,000 in seller closing costs. So essentially 219 is what I have it sold for and I'm only into it for 128. So when we walk away from closing on Monday, assuming that we close, sign and I get the the wiring proceeds on Monday, it's going to be about an 80 to $85,000 net profit check, which is going to be amazing. Now, why does a deal like this work, right? Why does a case study like this come together? One is because I had the private money raised. I had private lenders that were already ready to do business with me. People I had relationships with, uh, people who were ready to loan me money to do that deal 
at 12% interest or 15% of the profits, whichever was greater. So we decided to keep it and we refinanced it. We paid that private lender back their principal plus 12% interest just for a very short amount of time while I owned the property. So I only owed them 12% interest for a few months while I was trying to flip it and sell it. Then the commercial loan comes in. So I had to have decent enough credit to go get a commercial loan. Now today, five years ago, I had to go with a Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac loan. There were very few private lenders five years ago willing to lend on rental properties. Now today, there are dozens, hundreds of lenders out there that love to lend on rental properties. And they pretty much do it based on the asset. They do it based on the appraisal and they do it based on the income from the property. They're not doing it like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac does. They're not doing it based off the debt to income ratio. They're doing it what's called on what's called debt service coverage ratio. So debt to income ratio means, let's say I make 100 grand to use a round number and they'll allow you to have about a 40 to 45% debt out of the 100 grand, you'll have 40 to 45,000 a year in debt. That's called a debt to income ratio. Today, what a lot of these lenders are doing is they're doing what's called debt service coverage ratio. Debt service coverage ratio, DSCR. Debt service coverage ratio means that you have enough income from the rent to cover the debt service, which is your mortgage payment, okay? And they're typically looking for a debt service coverage ratio around 1.3%. So again, if you're getting $1,300 a month in rent, then your debt service could be about 1,000 a month. That's that's 1.3% debt service coverage ratio. Well, on this property, I was getting $1,600 a month in rent and my mortgage was only $1,100 a month, about four or $500 a month of net income. So really an awesome opportunity. So today, if you work with even companies like mine at freelandlending.com, you can get funding not only for the acquisition, but also funding for your long-term rental property. So I pivoted five years ago into a long-term rental loan, owned the property for the last five years. I was able to get cash flow, but also depreciation. I was able to write off that as an expense on my tax return. And now I'm gonna sell the property for about a $80,000 net profit holding it for five years and selling it now at the virtual top of the market. So what are your what are our takeaways from this? One is the way we do deals like this, which is essentially buy, rehab, tried to flip it, couldn't flip it, rented it, refinanced, and then sold it down the road, essentially on a rent, and then ultimately the tenant moved out and I sold it to a retail buyer. So You've heard of the Burr method, buy, rehab, rent, refi, and roll, or buy, rehab, rent, refi, and repeat. That's exactly what we did on this property to a T, worked out perfectly, okay? So in order to pull that off, what do you need? Well, first of all, you got to find deal flow. In this case, we used hudhomestore.com. Definitely recommend checking that out. Now, today... There's not as many HUD homes on the market as there used to be, but when there's a recession, when there's a correction in the market, there's gonna be a lot more Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, and FHA foreclosures. You're gonna find those FHA foreclosures at HUDHomestore.com. Secondly, had to have access to private money, right? Because I told FHA that I was paying cash, and I did pay cash, but it just wasn't my cash. It was someone else's cash from a private lender that lent me the money to buy the property. So I had no money out of my pocket, no credit check, no money down, literally no no money out of my own pocket. Then I did have to have decent enough credit to get the refinance loan, okay? The refi loan to be able to cash flow it long term, I had to have good enough credit. And then finally, I had to work with an agent. I worked with my buddy Steve Junker over at Remax. Um, you can look Steve up online. He's a fantastic realtor. And this year when I decided to sell Sandstone, Steve said, hey, market's great. This is what you should price it at. We did it. We sold the property in 48 hours. We went under contract and now we're going to close. So that's an amazing opportunity, an amazing case study, a big profit, big tax return, big tax benefits, big cash flow, all using private money to do buy, rehab, and flip 
or buy, rehab, rent, refi, and repeat. You've been listening to Josh Cantwell and the Accelerated Investor Podcast. Leave a comment on our iTunes channel and let us know what you want to learn next or who you'd like Josh to interview. While you're there, give us a five-star rating and make sure to subscribe so you can be the first to hear new episodes. Follow Josh Cantwell and his companies, Strategic Real Estate Coach and Freeland Ventures on all social media platforms now and stay up to date on new training and investment opportunities. To start your journey toward the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Apply for coaching at joshcantwellcoaching.com.